why allow two, sorry, down here, why, why allow two other uh, locations other than tracks? There are dozens of ways to address this issue, and we all know that I'm sure if each one of us up here drafted our own language, we would probably all draft it differently. Uh, and this language that, that Senator Thayer and I have settled on, as well as Senator Palmer and others, uh, is, is a compromise of a lot of ideas uh, that have been thrown around on this issue for years. Um, number one, I want to keep Kentucky money at home. And we need to have expanded gaming in Kentucky in order to do that. Number two, uh, I want to put our horse industry on an equal playing field with the industries in other states because our horse industry is a four billion dollar industry for the Commonwealth of Kentucky and right now it is it is at a significant disadvantage because expanded gaming is allowed in basically all of the com competing states to Kentucky and so we worked on trying to find language that would en encompass a number of ideas uh, and uh, allowing it at up to five racetracks and two freestanding locations seemed like a good compromise uh, on the issue of location. I do like the fact, and I think many people will like the fact, that there will be a limited number of locations for casinos in Kentucky. I think the vast majority of people don't want it in their own backyard. They would like to know basically the structure and, and know that it is a limited number and obviously the fact that we already have gaming uh, of one type at our racetracks, uh, I think people feel more comfortable with that. And are you talking about just slot, slot what, what, what specific games, slot machines? Because we're talking about any of the, of the games that can be played in a casino. So we're talking about the broad range of, of casino gaming. How about craps or, or yep. blackjack? With the two other... You're, you sound knowledgeable. She's from Louisville. That's some of that Kentucky money. <laughs> With the two other locations, couldn't uh, people who oppose this legitimately fear it could end up in their backyard? Well... I think, I think when, you, when you look at, at what it takes to make um, a casino a successful operation, uh, you obviously have to have access, you have to have good road systems, good infrastructure, you've got to have population that can get there on very short notice, and so I think the economics of it uh, begin to limit the, the potential places for that. And also. Uh, I think keep in mind that uh, the enabling legislation can address any number of requirements and restrictions on, on where casinos are and where they could be placed. So uh, we have on purpose kept this amendment simple and, uh, and left a lot of details uh, to be worked out uh, if the people make the decision that they want expanded gaming in Kentucky, then their elected representatives, uh, the General Assembly, will come back and work with me and we will figure out how to implement it. As Governor, as keeping it simple, doesn't that, um, I'm sorry, yeah, um, uh, if it does pass and voters do say yes, doesn't that lead to another fight down the road on how it's going to be taxed and, and where these are going to be? Well, it, it leads to debate down the road on all of those issues and I think that's a healthy debate to have. Um, but. I don't think anyone up here uh, would advocate that we try to put every detail of enabling legislation into a constitutional amendment. It would run for hundreds of pages probably. Uh, we need to get this issue very clearly before the people. Do they want expanded gaming in Kentucky or not? And if they vote for that, then we will all sit down and, and look at all the factors uh, that will, number one, uh, you know, make sure that uh, these are in the locations they ought to be, and number two, how they're regulated. Obviously, we want strict regulation of this process uh, to ensure everybody that it'll be run in the public interest. Is there any, I, obviously it's a, it's a constitutional amendment, so it's changing the Constitution, but what thought process or concerns did you have about giving one industry preferential treatment in a constitutional amendment? 
first of all, uh, no particular racetrack is, a is awarded a license under this constitutional amendment. Uh, they will have to compete for whatever licenses may be available, and the amendment says up to five uh, may be located at racetracks. There will be up to two that are freestanding, and so there, there will be competition uh, there in terms of different locations. Uh, one of the main, two, two reasons for working with the racetracks uh, on this amendment. One is that um, it allows us to limit locations to some degree, and I think people feel comfortable with, more comfortable with gaming that's already going on at our racetracks, and so I think they will be more comfortable knowing that most of these will be located where gaming already exists. The second reason, uh, quite honestly, is economic reality. I think everybody will admit that if you locate a freestanding casino in the same community where we have a current racetrack, that racetrack's going to lose. It, the racetrack cannot compete with a freestanding casino unless it's part of the racetrack. Uh, obviously, with a signature industry like we have, uh, with with the thoroughbred industry and with the horse industry, a, a significant part of that is our racing industry. We need a uh, healthy uh, racing, uh, a healthy racing industry in Kentucky to to keep fueling um, that that part of the industry and and making us continue to be the horse capital of the world. So I think both of those reasons, or for both of those reasons, we have placed some of these at tracks. So with that said. Another group or company would not be able to bid for a downtown Louisville casino, for instance, because that would be in competition with Churchill Downs. Or with Churchill, is Churchill Downs guaranteed that they will have one of those casinos? Under this under this uh, amendment, they're not they're not guaranteed to get a casino, uh, but a casino, a freestanding casino, couldn't be located within 60 miles of a of a licensed racetrack. There is a there is a mileage protection for our tracks. Does the mileage protection um, cover the racetrack regardless of whether they get a casino license? In other words, if Churchill for some reason didn't get a casino license, could there be a Louisville casino? No, not under the amendment. You had referenced some figures for the revenue this would generate. And I think they were based on the study that was released earlier for the Chamber of Commerce. But that had more than five and two casinos. Do right. you have revenue figures from what this would generate? No, we don't have uh, particular revenue <clears throat> figures from this particular proposal. Uh, I think it's obvious that it will be in the hundreds of millions of dollars, whether it's 300 million, 500 million. We won't really know until we get them up and running. But we all know that it's going to be a significant amount of money, both in terms of one time license fees and in terms of annual uh, tax revenues. It'll also depend upon what tax rates uh, that we end up placing on that revenue. So there's a lot of moving parts to this that are yet to be determined and won't be determined until you pass the enabling legislation. Any idea when this might come up for mm -hmm. a vote in committee, Senator there? Um, I would like, first of all, it has to be assigned by the Senate Committee on Committees to the State and Local Government Committee. Uh, I, I hope it will be. Uh, I've been given assurances that it will be. Uh, and if that's the case, my plan would be to call it up in committee a week from tomorrow at our regularly scheduled meeting. It's usually Wednesday at noon, but we may uh, schedule early in the morning to allow for the testimony. Uh, Governor Bashir and Commissioner Comer uh, have, uh, have agreed to come and testify on behalf of the bill. Uh, and I will be inviting uh, the Family Foundation to come in and provide their perspective. I've already, I told uh, Martin, Martin that uh, a month or so ago that if this ever comes up in, before committee, obviously we want to give both sides an opportunity to uh, to discuss uh, their position on the bill. Governor and Senator there, uh, you've got Representative Nemus with you. Uh, have you discussed uh, the bill he introduced last week that included a local option? Uh, and, and will that be part of, of this as well? I have talked with uh, Representative Nemus about his legislation, and as you know, his would be statutory in nature, and this is a constitutional amendment, a different approach, uh, and, and honestly, I prefer this approach because we're not making the decision. We're going to let the people of this state make the decision. 
uh, whether local option uh, could be required or not could be put in the enabling legislation. I think that's an open question that can be addressed along with a lot of other questions uh, once we get that far. Would this amendment as drafted create a, a bidding war or a competition for the yet to be awarded ninth racetrack license? Uh, not as far as I know. Uh, you know, there is a ninth race, uh, racetrack license that has not been awarded. Uh, it has been the subject of litigation, and I don't know, quite honestly, whether that's over yet or not. Um, but, uh, you know, that license is out there. But, uh, as, uh, as you pointed out, this only allows up to five casinos at racetrack. Given the two different motivations for um for, for this amendment, one being let people decide, the other being pro-casinos. I was interested on the stage today by a show of hands, is there anyone here who would vote against this amendment uh, at, the, at the ballot box this fall? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I have a copy of it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm kind of curious yeah. about the, the aspect of this where we're having the enabling legislation is this asking the horse industry to basically trust you that this will in fact help them? In other states, the, the, the lawmakers have come back and, and reduced the amount of revenue that actually goes to the horse industry. How can they be certain that this will help? Well, certainly the wording of this amendment assures the horse industry that we are supporting supportive of them in two ways. Number one, it provides that up to five of these casinos will be located at racetracks. Number two, uh, in the provision where this any tax revenues will be spent, it, it does include uh, for the benefit of the horse industry. So um, I, I think that they feel comfortable that we've got their best interest at heart. Are you confident, you previously said that you believe there are 23 senators to vote for this. Are you confident that the people who were with you before the session or you know, as the session got underway are still with you after the redistricting battle and any concern about being midway, starting this midway through the session? Well, first of all, I don't think this is uh, too late to be starting this bill because I don't think we're late in the session. We have plenty of time to pass this measure. Uh, secondly, uh, we've had 23 or more uh, senators indicate that they are ready to put this on the ballot, but as I've said several times, until they call the roll that day in the Senate, we won't know for sure. And my goal, and I think Senator Thayer's goal, is to have that roll call. Have you lost anybody in the redistricting process? Not that I know of. Thank you all. <laughs>